Welcome to the final question of this grade 12 CAT computer application technology prac exam from November 2024. And this is the final question, which is an integrated question, which uses a lot of the packages all together. So let's get those final marks and let's wrap up this paper strongly. Just a reminder that there are links to the data files and the other questions in the video description. So use that as a guide when you're looking at the other questions as well as trying out this exam paper. So let's get stuck into the final question. So here we got question seven, 7.1, 7 prepare the envelopes using a mail merge as follows. So here we're gonna do a mail merge. It's a lot of marks for a mail merge. So let's make sure we get through all the steps. So we're gonna open up the seven envelope file, which I've already done at, over here. So yeah, I've got the seven envelope. And what do they want me to do? Only new members. So we're preparing this for a mail merge. So there's, I don't think there's any editing to it. Only new members from the Space Out shop will receive a letter. So use the seven member spreadsheet as the source. So I'm gonna come here to mailings. We're gonna come here to start the mail merge. Let's do envelopes, because it is an envelope. And I'm just gonna take the default. They don't specify anything. So let's just click okay. So they don't specify any details. So they say we must use the seven members spreadsheet as the data source. So we're gonna come here to select recipients. We're gonna get from an existing list. So in that folder, if we scroll down, there's the seven members spreadsheet. So we're gonna use that as my source. I assume that's the only sheet, so we're gonna be happy with that. And I'm assuming the data has first row, so let's go okay. Then we're gonna replace the address text with the address field. So we want to replace that with the field for the address. So we come across to the insert merge field and we're gonna use the address field so it goes, that goes over there. You can preview the results to see it. There we go, I'm happy with that. And then they want us to save the envelope document in exact, but do not close it. Okay, so we're gonna save it, but I think, to, have we done everything? What's this line for? Only new members from the spaced out shop will receive a letter. So they say only new members. Does that affect our data? Let's go look at the data. So I know we select the recipients. Let's edit the recipient. And so we can see that there is a field that is checked. We've got an address and there's a new member. Okay, so, so because they are saying only new members, that was tricky, only new members will receive a letter. We actually only want the new people. So I'm gonna put a filter on and say where the new member field must equal to the text. Yes, so I'm typing the word yes, let's test that. So we only want the new member to equal to the word yes. Click okay, so there we can see all the yeses. So I'm happy with that. So I think that that's gonna be the other mark that we might be missing. Remember, they will never put text in unless there's a reason for it. So why did they put that text there? Because we only want the new members, we've done that. We've got the address, save the seven envelope. So I'm gonna save it, so click save, and then complete the merge and save the merge document as seven merged. So we're gonna come here and click on, let's just preview the results, we're happy with it, there we go. And then I'm gonna come here to finish the merge, edit individual documents, we want all of them. And so yeah, I'm in a brand new one with all of our changes. There you can see there are nine in total. I think that is the correct amount that we need. And we're gonna save this into our exam folder and we're gonna save it as seven merged. So let's save it as seven merged, click save. And there we've got our folder. If I go to my examination folder, there's seven merged with our final results. So we can save everything, save, close, and there we go. Now we must open up the chart document. It's also a Word document. And we're gonna modify the chart document to appear as follows. So it must look like that. So that is a chart which I think is based on some way. So if I click on it, you see we do have access to all the chart options that we would normally have in like Excel. You can see a design and so on. And you can see that this chart, first of all, is a column chart, not a pie chart. So I'm gonna click on change chart type and change it to a column chart. So that's my first thing I'm gonna do, click on OK. So there we go, it, look, it looks a little bit better already. Inventory value, that's the heading is fine. These values on the side are different. So yeah, we can see that the values go up in 10,000. So 5,000, 15, 25. So they go up in 10,000s, but they start at 5,000. So we want the bottom to be 5,000. So if I right click on the axes, let's go format the axes. We can see that it's going up in 10, but we want the bottom one to be 5,000. Let's see if it adjusts the maximum to be 65,000. There we go, it does automatically adjust the top one to be 65,000. So we're starting at 5,000 and going up, still in 10, still going up in 10, but we're gonna end at 65. I think that looks a little bit better. So we're just setting the bottom value to 5,000. That was the other one that we had to do. Then you can see that these labels are in the wrong direction. We want them to face that way. So by clicking on them, we're already at the data so let's go look at the text options and i click on that one for the direction so i want the direction to be 
rotate it that way. If we do that way, we get the same as that. So that's all done. So remember, this is four marks. So we've already done the pie chart to a column chart. We've done the bottom axes starting at 5,000. We've done that. What is the fourth thing? It might have something to do with the data labels. Let's compare the data labels. Okay, so the data labels look correct. They are on the outside, but they don't have the decimal aspects to it. So if I click on the data labels, you see we can now be on the data labels over here. Let's go look at the label options. And so it's got the details of it. Let's go look at the number ah, over here. So we want a custom type of number. One, I don't want a custom. Let's try currency. And it does give me the option for decimal place. I'm going to keep it R because I think my computer is set to R. So let's keep it to South African Rand. But we don't want any decimal places. So I'm going to make that a zero. And if we do that and click away, there we can see it removed the zero zero, kept it as R, but there's no comma. So I don't know if that's going to be a difference there. If I click on all of them again. So I looked at the memo. The memo says that it makes it a number with zero decimal places. But if we do that, it's going to take away the actual RAND symbol. So that's why I'm leaving mine as a currency. I'm not too worried about the comma. I don't think that's what they were looking for. I think the key thing here is that they're looking for the, the decimal places to be gone. So that's where the mark is allocated, that there's zero decimal places. So the fact that I've got it as currency to zero decimal places, I think I'll get the mark for that. So I'm happy with that. I think those are the four changes that they want to make. Pie chart, starting at 5,000, change the orientation of, this, of these texts and remove in the decimal place. I think those are the four marks. And then insert a linked icon to the seven stock spreadsheet below the text that automatically updates. So we're going to insert a linked icon. So we're going to come over here underneath here. We're going to insert a linked icon. Now you might think it's a link, but it's not. It's actually an object. And that's why we display it as an icon. So we're going to go and not create a new file. We're going to create from a particular file. And we're going to browse for it. And then we're referring to the seven stock spreadsheet. So we're going to insert the seven stock spreadsheet as a linked item. And it's been inserted as a link. So we want to link to the file and we want to display it as an icon. So we want it like that. So I'm going to click OK. And there is our item. If I press Alt F9, you can see that there is a link to the spreadsheet over there. So there we go. We're going to save. And then we can open up the seven inventory spreadsheet. So we finished with this one. So let's close that one. Open up the seven inventory spreadsheet work in the total worksheet. So we are in the total worksheet. Apply a spreadsheet feature to display the total inventory value for each category. Make sure that each category displays on a new page. So if we come over here, so that's going to be some sort of subtotal. So we want to display inventory for each category. So I'm first going to sort it by the category, which is column B. So let's first sort all this data by the category. So let's go sort. We are sorting it by the category in ascending order. I'm happy with that. So there's all our groupings are together. So let's first sort it. Then I'm going to select all this data and then come here to data and then click on the subtotal category. And they want the total inventory value. So we want to total all the inventory values. So we're going to click on not the selling price, but the inventory total. And we want to sum the inventory. And they said over here, if you look here, they want to make sure each category displays on a new page. So that refers to the page break between the groups. So I do want that. And we want it each change, not in the product, but each change in category is what we're looking for. We want to sum the inventory. We want to put each group on its own page that's the page grade so those are the settings that we want and there we can see all of our astronomy we can see the total inventory for that for bedding the total for that and if we went to print this you would see that each category is on its own page so just to recap we first sorted the data then we selected it and we went to the subtotal category and we made sure we at each change we were looking at each category so for each category we wanted to put in a sum for the inventory and each one must be on a brand new page okay so that's how we made our subtotal if you're unsure about subtotals make sure you go check out our subtotal video that'll give you a revision on that because it isn't asked often but when it is asked you want to make sure you get all those marks so there we go i think we've done all the questions that is the final one. We've done all 150. Hope you were able to do as many of them as possible. Just remember, if you want more papers to practice on, make sure you go to our YouTube channel and go click on the playlist tab to find more exam papers that you can use for your revision. Just remember to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel. It will really support us and help us to make more videos that can help you for your exams. So go subscribe at Miss Long RT and Cat as well as on TikTok at Miss Education. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the mister.
long way.